<laughs> Thank you very much for having me. Notice how Brian stumbled on uh, saying that it was a pleasure to work with me. He's like, it was uh, an experience working with her. <laughs> so uh, today uh, we are talking about uh, Angular plus Jamstack, uh, triple equals Jamgular. Jamgular is not a real word. I am trying to make it happen. I believe it should happen <laughs> so that I don't have to say full stack Angular in the Jamstack or any of those word combinations. So uh, if you hear me say Jamgular, uh, just know that you have to use that phrase from now on forevermore. Good. <laughs> so as Brian said, my name is Tara Minixik. Um, I work at Netlify, uh, which is one of the sponsors of this conference, and um, I started working there because I used their product so much. Uh, people most know Netlify for kind of doing, uh, being a really easy way to deploy your sites and put it on, um, you know, reliable content delivery networks, which we'll talk about what that phrase means. Um, but I use it a lot too for like local development and also you can set up a bunch of like web hooks, do auth very easily, um, split testing. And one thing with Angular is we don't always have a very clear uh, continuous integration, continuous deployment setup. And uh, Netlify gives you a really great Git integration to make that happen. So that's why I started working there because I was like, I really like these things. I would like to make them even better. And they said yes, and I said okay. <laughs> and as Brian said, I'm also an Angular GDE, um, a what I like to call nerdy mom to a now two year old, and one that is yes going to come at any moment. <laughs> now I am in my ninth month of pregnancy, um, but I can still code and I can still talk. So at least for the next hour, we're good. <laughs> I hope I didn't just jinx myself. Um, okay. So I want to cover what we'll be talking about today. We're going to just, um, Angular is pretty new to the Jamstack arena, uh, maybe kind of one of the newer frameworks to be jumping into it. Uh, so I want to cover not only what the Jamstack is a little bit, since we're at a Jamstack conference, but you might need to know because you're at a Jamstack conference, what the Jamstack is. And I just want to drill it in with like a succinct explanation and then some tech to back up what's actually happening in that Jamstack architecture. And then specifically how Angular uh, is incorporated to make Jamgular. Uh, and then we'll talk about a little bit of like why even bother to do this <laughs> and then we'll jump into code. So it's gonna be like half uh, what we call a talky docky on my team and then half Cody Cody. So uh, what is this? Uh, I think it's very important to basically cover this a little bit each time to get rid of this FUD we have around the Jamstack architecture. FUD is fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Um, and FUD, uh, these traits tend to be quite uh, dev eccentric when it comes to technologies. I know I'm constantly skeptical of things that are put in front of me. I'm like, why is it better? How is this different? Tell me why. Ain't nothing but a heartache. So Jamstack architecture is basically a way of thinking about how we build apps. And I'll just say the UI is compiled, the front end is fully decoupled, and data is pulled in as needed. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> Let's leave it very succinct in that way. And then talk about this, um, the tech that we have behind it. So uh, we're saying that we're generating cacheable static assets. We're deploying to a CDN or content delivery network. We're using client side JavaScript to utilize homemade or third party APIs. I think that's a big thing that they can be APIs that you make or they can be APIs from third parties if you wanna delegate work um, and utilize things like serverless functions. So one thing that's really important to me is the DX of Jamstack. You're creating a better development experience through automated workflow. Um, so I'm trying, to, I'm trying to limit the words, so we'll move on. But speaking of the words, I want to uh, go over, I'll go over some words that are more of like Jamstack kind of glossary uh, that some may not be familiar with, uh, like content delivery network. So these are really powerful 
dumb servers. <laughs> and we talk about dumb components in Angular, so I feel like it's okay to call other things like servers dumb. Uh, <laughs> but they're so geographically distributed edge nodes. So they're scattered throughout the globe. Um, and they take the contents that you generate that live in your origin server. And as soon as a user requests that, it sends it to a edge node that is closest to the person requesting it. And that's how you're gonna get those things delivered fast is because it's smart enough to say, hey, we need to direct this content as close to the user as possible. But it also has this redirect knowledge that says something's going wrong with this edge node that's closest. What's the next closest? Let's send that information there. So it's still as close as we can get, but it has that redirect knowledge, so it's not going to fail. So then you get it to be more reliable. Next, what is Angular in the Jamstack? So Angular is pretty much working on the front end, right? Like when you're using Angular, you're building out your site. So the only part that really starts um, getting affected by the Jamstack is that being able to pre-render your assets. And you have two choices to do that in Angular. You can use Scully, which is the one and only uh, <laughs> static site generator for Scully. Uh, and that just came out last year by the Hero Devs team. Um, I'll point you to more resources on that. But the Angular community has been asking for something like this for years. Uh, and we wanted it be, to be able to make the sites faster uh, in delivering them, but also so we could have something on the page that web crawlers could read so we could do better with SEO. So now we have that and it's really easy to use. It's what we're gonna step through when we start coding. But there's also Angular Universal, which is actually the Angular uh, server-side rendering kind of package. But in that package, we have the pre-render capabilities uh, thanks to Minko. Um, that will we can use that and not particularly focus on the hybrid rendering part of Angular Universal, but just focus on that pre-render. And I'll show you what that looks like in two slides. Uh, and then we're still putting those assets on a CDN, so it gets to the user, gets as close to the user as possible. We're still dynamically grabbing data from APIs and by triggering serverless functions and webhooks, and we're still decoupling. Uh, and modularizing that development process using Git workflows and automation. So this is the main page. You can find it on angular.io that talks about Angular Universal. They're working on better documentation. Um, I'm hoping that uh, we can get even more documentation on here to step you through the whole process. But until then, I have some resources that I'll share with you. But I just wanna show you real quick what this looks like. So you just use the ng add schematics to add ng universal uh, forward slash express engine. Because this will add some server code to your code, but you won't build that out and ship it. We'll actually be using this uh, in right here in this example to just pre-render. So once you have that, you can see that it adds a few things, but specifically in your package.json, you can see that you now have these commands that you can run, uh, including pre-render. And so that's basically going to, uh, we'll throw it in here and run it right now. So this is just a standard Angular application that just has three routes, three different pages. So it goes and it builds out the actual application and it bundles it all up like it would with a regular ng build. But then also you can see here, it pre-renders the routes that we have. So then if we look inside of our distributables folder, dist, and look inside universal pre-render where they usually live, we now have a browser folder. And in here you can see there's a directory for all of the routes that we have on our page. And inside of that directory, you'll see that we have the HTML rendered for that page. So there's a bunch of stuff in there. And then you can see at the top, it's a HTML doc with your styles and everything you have for that home page. So then when you want to uh, ship this code, ship the pre-rendered code, you'll be shipping uh, the published directory you'll use is this universal pre-render, the name of the project forward slash browser to get your static assets. So. What is a static site generator? 
uh, especially if you're an Angular developer, you may be like, what is that? And we have one. <laughs> this is what it is. Uh, every major framework and language has one. And it's basically, uh, it generates all of the pages of a site um, at build time. And it does it whenever there's a change to the site. So that way, whenever there's a change, it may generates all of the HTML that you need so that when you're deploying these things, when the client requests them, you're just giving them these static assets. So that makes it not only easy to cache, it makes it harder to hack and uh, get to the users faster. So the one that we have, we are lucky enough to have is Scully. Uh, you can find this information at, uh, let me make sure I always somehow get this at your end. Yeah, scully.io. Um, and uh, you can run through their documentation. There's a lot of things that they can do and they do, they recursively go through the site. So if you have something like a directory that has blog posts inside of it, um, it will recursively go through those and make sure they hit up every route and you can customize it and manage all the routes that it chooses. Um, but also uh, there's a lot more that you could do with state management in here. And um, as far as like getting your routes, uh, and manipulating them. There's a lot of tooling for that. And they're try trying to build out more of a plugin system as well to make the process even smoother. Um, so that's worth uh, checking out and we'll use that when we go into the code section. Uh, okay, the next step we're gonna talk about is why are we even bothering to do this? Um, I'm going to quickly run through some examples of people that had a really fast uh, or like really good experience with it. But really when it comes down to it, uh, you've got to, you'll want to try it out on your site. I know that you see the speed difference and it's, that's very exciting, but also just the developer experience in general is the thing that always blows me away. I'm going to touch on each of these topics though. So uh, Smashing Magazine, um, this is like kind of the beginning of the turn of the Jamstack era. <laughs> they switched all of their e-commerce and their huge content site to a more Jamstack architecture and saw a faster performance from 800 milliseconds to 80. Uh, Perfect Keto, uh, I thought this was really great, is they basically started using headless WordPress. Uh, headless is basically decoupling the UI from the API. So you're able to get information in but that information doesn't care where it goes. Uh, and so they put this architecture up using the Jamstack architecture and were able to uh, improve their load time uh, from 6.2 seconds, which is bonkers. Nobody's waiting around for 6.2 seconds to 750 milliseconds. Um, this is something that I think a lot of people are on monolithic CMS architectures. So making that change, you can see that uh, Cornerstone is able to have their page loads 25% faster, but also the iteration and making new content was able to get to their site 30% faster, um, which is uh, kind of thanks to the developer experience, which we'll touch on. Um, and Citrix uh, was able to, I like this, and uh, they reduced their cost by 65%. How? It's because they delivered faster, like way ahead of their deadline. Nobody, <laughs> I shouldn't say nobody in tech delivers before their deadline, but like, I can't tell you the last time I did that. It's like having a contractor like work on a kitchen and be like, we're done two weeks early. And it's just like, what did you break? But no, it's just a better DX. Uh, and so like we see this with Loblaw uh, Digital and they're saying Netlify empowers our engineering teams to launch websites and campaigns in minutes with no ops, a goal that has often been a pipe dream in our industry. Uh, I relate so heavy to this. Um, and even there's a whole blog post by Tom Preston Werner about developer experience. And he has this quote in here that says, the only thing that matters to me when it comes to developer experience is this, can I turn what's in my mind into finished product quickly and easily or not? Uh, the best thing that you can do for your customers and your product is have happy, developers that feel empowered to make that product because then you actually are able to uh, turn things over very quickly, get things up on the site. Uh, if it becomes trudgery, if people get blocked all the time, it's just, it's, it's a 
big wear on humans and on your delivery dates, therefore your product. So uh, I touch on this a bit. And one thing that I love the most is the Git workflow of this process. Um, and it's using Git to organize uh, and check code for many devs, especially now that so many of us are distributed now. This really helps uh, you're utilizing Git repos and the functionality like cloning, forking, pull requests, merge checks, and more to create uh, an easily distributed and easily checked and quick interaction uh, development process and quick iteration. So those, uh, I talk about the checks in here. We do this, this is how we deliver content for our blog. And um, we have all the checks that are, you know, making sure that we have the required uh, tests done and we're following certain rules. There are so many things that we do every single time we push code in. Let's not have to think about that. Let's automate it. Um, and what else is really nice about that is like all of these are immutable builds and atomic deploys. So with the atomic deploys, you're basically saying something's changed. We're going to put up a whole new version with that change instead of changing things uh, individually. Uh, and we had a tweet about that from my coworker Jason Langsdorf and Jonathan Speak. Uh, so Jonathan was saying, like, we all know that, like, don't ship on Fridays. How many of us stick to it? I don't know. I've my have never been on teams that stick to that very well. And Netlify is no different. Um, but the thing, like, so you know, we have all these commits going in, but. Uh, we have the functionality because of the Git workflow that lets us say, okay, this is an atomic deploy of this change, of this change. So there are all these immutable builds. If somebody like Jason breaks something, uh, Jason never breaks anything. Uh, <laughs> but if that were to happen, we can easily roll back to the build that we know is the working one. Uh, and what that gives is this empowerment and this confidence in developers to be able to make these iterations, you know, not fast and sloppy because we have checks, but we're able to make them in the confidence that if for some reason something breaks, we can roll back and uh, not feel too much shame, <laughs> dependent on your team. Um, okay, so I want to see if I can see how much. Yeah, we got about 11 minutes left. We're gonna start jumping into the code Ooh. Uh, and talk about the resources uh, or like how we're even going to do this. I saw the word resources and immediately my brain just said, speak the word on the page. So <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and go into our uh, terminal. Feel free to let, uh, Brian know or in the chat know that uh, if you can't see anything or if it's not big enough and they'll relay the message to me. But we're gonna go ahead and jump in and we're gonna do a few things right off the bat uh, that we might be used to. So I'm gonna go ahead and maybe type properly. We're gonna use the uh, Angular CLI to create a new project. Um, I'm gonna make sure I'm on track. Alrighty, increase. You said one, but I'm gonna do two. More, more, more. How's that? Ooh, no problem. Easy, easy fixes. Okay. So, uh, let's say the jam, jam dealer. And we want to go ahead and just avoid the questions and just answer them right off the bat. So we'll say that we are going to add routing and we are going to set a style to CSS and we'll let that run. So uh, if you're familiar with the Angular CLI, it's basically building out this whole skeleton app for us, um, including all of some like the main component um, adding all of the config things we need that will add unit testing and uh, give us a all of the commands for serving it locally and building it up. And um, we're going to have this routing. We're going to make this project. We're going to make a few pages and uh, that we can set up the routing for so we can see how it pre-renders. 
but before we go into the pre-rendering, we'll push it up and deploy it on to Netlify with a few commands. And uh, then we will add Scully. And um, I will keep an eye on my time. And uh, wherever we stop, I'll give you the resources to keep going uh, with tutorials or with videos that I've created. Um, and uh, that will let you make your projects or, or jamify, jam stackify your own Angular products if you have them. So we have this running. We're going to uh, change into the folder. And we'll go ahead and clear out what we have in the skeleton, uh, which is in app, app component HTML, um, just by going to the bottom and deleting to the top. And we'll go ahead and add something that says that we really are here. Jam.dev. All right, so we'll save that out. Um, and then let's go ahead and just use the CLI. So this is ng generate module. Uh, and what did I want to make? We'll make home and we'll set the route to home module to app.module. And we'll give them all of our information forever. <laughs> uh, and then we're going to make two more and we'll say change home to about, but don't be fooled that it's going to change all of the word, all of the words we need it to. And then we'll also make one that says, let's just say, sorry, I don't know what just happened there. Oh, so services. All right, so now we have modules for this and I just want to change the routing because it does this, we can make that root route our home route. Oh, remind me, next time I'll, I, I'll open code. This is, uh, I always forget. Okay, so we have our routing set up uh, and we're gonna go ahead and let me just go ahead and start the Git workflow. And what's nice is that we now have the GitHub CLI. So uh, before I do that, I wanna make sure, did everything, yeah. Um, let me do this real quick though, because I don't like having it here. And then we will say, what do we have changed? We have all these new things. So we'll add that and we'll say git commit adds modules and stuff <laughs> and routing. Sure. Uh, then that's good. Let's go ahead and say GitHub repo create. Yeah, that works. Uh, description. It's so cool. I, I always try to put like emoticons in there, but I'm not going to waste your time. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what I want. So it's going to spin that up. And now we have things that we can push up. I have a alias push up, but I, it's like git, but yeah, git push, git push set stream origin. And then we just have to put the working branch that we're on, which is nice because then we just say push up main. And now we have our kind of like git workflow started off. So we have a repo. If somebody from my team was like, hey, uh, I want to make a fix on your change, they just go to GitHub. And they, you know, they fork the repo, clone it, make the PR. So we have this easily, easily managed product project where we can 
each person can pull it down and make the changes. And we have a central source of communication of working on that project along with the code in one place. Uh, it's just so good. <laughs> um, but now we wanted to play it because I could just show you ng serve right now and serve it up and show you on localhost. But let's go ahead and make it live into the world. If you don't already have the Netlify CLI installed, this is the command to do that. Uh, npm netlify cli g, that's npm install, and to do it globally. Um, and then we want to, uh, so I already have it installed. So I'm going to make my Netlify configuration file, which is netlify.toml in the base directory of your application. And this is going to tell Netlify a few things. First of all, when you build this project, the command for building it is ng build prod. And then it's going to build that into the directory that I want you to publish, which for Angular is always dist and the project name. Uh, what did we call it? The jam, oh gosh, let's see. What is this? The jam jamgular. Okay. Jam jamgular. Um, and then a special thing with Angular is that all of the routing is hang handled by the Angular router. So this is an instance where you can use Netlify for all your Jamstack Angular stuff, but you can just use it for Angular. But you'll want to make sure that your uh, redirects redirects um, are handled for page refreshes. Um, so let me make sure it is redirects. Uh, so the other thing is just in general, this is where you do all, you can do all your redirects. Uh, there is another way to make a redirects file in your Angular application and save it, the reference to it in your angular.json configuration file. Um, I like this because this is also where I would put all my functions and my build plugins information. So I like working inside the netlify.toml, but in general redirects, you can have that as a redirects file in your Angular application. So we want to say that um, everything from, everything, just everything, uh, we're gonna send it to the index.html file that Angular creates, and we're going to give it a status of 200. Um, redirects are super powerful, uh, so powerful that I'm not even going to talk about it. Uh, <laughs> but they're very powerful, so I highly recommend going there. Does this say I have one minute left? Yeah? <laughs> OK, so uh, we'll just go ahead and push this up and add uh, I'm just gonna do it as I talk about it. So we have that time where we'll say uh, Netlify init. Oh, you know what, let's let's add this real quick. Uh, good status. Uh, okay. Netlify init, it's fine, it'll work. Uh, so we'll make a new site from me. Uh, Damn, because I think that shouldn't exist. Good, it doesn't. So it grabs that information that we just put into the Tomo file, that ng build prod and where the project lives. Uh, the functions folder, we won't worry about that today, but it's a good default to just set it to functions. Um, and then it's going to go ahead and add that to, um, add the deploy key. And you'll get an email from GitHub that says, oh, a key has been something, something. And it's in the process of now deploying that site to Netlify. Um, uh, bad gateway. That's okay. I'll show you. Uh, what? Well, let's push this code out. Let's see what happened in the dashboard. So then you hit Netlify open, NTL open, and you can actually, oh, I have my JavaScript disabled. Uh, you can actually see on the dashboard, we can see, try to figure out what happened. Um, so it's still deploying the site. We can look at the logs to see if we see anything. Everything's building appropriately. 
So there are no errors yet. So that may have just been something funny in the CLI. Um, but we'll go ahead and add these changes. Um, and we'll push that up, which will actually, that push is going to trigger another build. Uh, but it's fine because we can see here that this is up. And we can see that our routes are working. Oh, if you type them right. Our routes are working. What? Oh, it's. Did I make a services one? Homeworks. I may have spelled it wrong somewhere because spelling is not what I do best. Okay. I may have broken something there. But that's okay because we're going to pre-render it anyway. And I'm just going to show you real quick how to add Scully to pre-render it. Um, and then I swear I'll wrap up. <laughs> um, so now that you have your site, you just have to say ng add, again with the schematics, uh, scoli.io init. Um, and that will bring in the scoli library. Uh, so you can make all of those changes to make the pre-renders. And then you just need to uh, build it out and then uh, run npm run scully um, and then you'll actually i'll show you here uh you'll just have to change um uh, here it is i have a whole blog post on it you can check out um you'll just need to change your command to ng build and an npm run scully and then change where your directory is um but you can check that out here this blog post is building an Angular Jamstack app with Scully. Um, and I'll just show you real quick, we're gonna cancel everything out. Some resources. I'm sorry we didn't get farther into that or further into the code example, but I have a ton of resources. Uh, this one I think is really important. The CSS Tricks team made a bunch, if you're ever like, well, how do I do this in the Jamstack? This resource is super great because it shows you CMSs, hosting, e-commerce, data storage. Um, we have a ton of stuff on our blog that covers how to use a bunch of these resources, a bunch of these things in the ecosystem, as well as how to build and start migrating your applications. Um, Jamstack.org, if you're just like, okay, but what is this still? There's a lot of great information here that they're constantly working on. Um, there's the Modern Web Development Jamstack book that's free, you know, in exchange for like your email address. Uh, and I made an audiobook version of it too. So if you find yourself washing dishes and staying home and going nowhere, <laughs> I usually say in the car, but we're like, we don't go in the car anymore. Uh, so there's an audiobook version of it there too for free. Uh, we have this podcast, Remotely Interesting, that we think is hilarious, uh, but hopefully you find it informative and at least remotely interesting. Uh, you can find that at remoteinteresting.netlify.com. Um, and then we just created a, a learning platform that's all free, video-based. Uh, so if you want to still kind of do this walking through the creation of an Angular Jamstack site with me, that exists here. And then I'm in the process of releasing one soon that talks about serverless Angular, where we walk through the process of building an e-commerce site with serverless functions, with webhooks, touching on APIs and stateless auth. Uh, and just in general, uh, we have a bunch of stuff on there and we're building out more and more content. So check that out. Is that wrapped up in enough time? <laughs> We've still got a little bit of time for some questions. So um, awesome. I, I'm going to get to the audience questions right away. Uh, so why are redirects powerful? You kind of skipped over that, but oh, I guess yeah. in a, as quickly as you can, why are redirects powerful? I know. So uh, it's it gives you a lot of power because you're able to do things like um, 
So we have edge handlers uh, at Netlify. And so this is using that redirect knowledge to pass in a function to the redirects. So a user can come to your page and say, request a certain route. And from that route, you can load a function from the CDN, not even from, uh, from like where you're ever you're getting your JavaScript, but from the CDN. So it doesn't have to make that round trip. You can grab that function, get the headers from the person requesting it and say, you're on the East Coast. I know that uh, California needs to have this page sent to them. So you're able to customize a lot of information, uh, send customize or like customize how that interaction happens based on information coming from the user. So, and all it is, is just a redirect. Um, so, I, I have to, my, my, the docs team in Elfi is like, chill out about this, try not to get too excited so that we can like uh, uh, stabilize <laughs> like uh, all the things that we, cause you can do a lot with it, but again, you know, with lots of power, da, 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 da. Yeah. Uh, but I, I do get excited about them because um, especially customizing anything that we can for our users to get them the, the specific information that they want faster. Uh, is a really great resource. So that's one way that they're very powerful. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like I'm, I'm clearly not not using them to their full abilities myself, honestly. I didn't even know you could do the, the redirecting based on like where they are and things like that. So um, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, 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 that's amazing. Um, okay, so next question is, uh, Netlify specific, does Netlify only deploy if tests pass on commit? Is there auto rollback if tests fail after deploy or when deploy, when deploys happen before tests finish? Um, so the tech, they won't deploy it until the tests have finished. Um, you can, you can set certain things to make it so that uh, like, I think we, we actually talked about this the other day because we were talking about it would be, uh, it's something that we all really like the possibility of is to immediately roll back if there's an error, but um, that should be a setting. So we have to figure out the best way to implement that. Um, but you can set, like, we have seen users set this up themselves where if there's an error, it will roll back to the latest uh, immutable build that has no errors. Um, okay. But this isn't integrated into Netlify yet. Yeah, I mean, I know, I know, like some of mine are, are I, I guess maybe it depends on what tools you're using. Like my, my Hugo site, like if the, when the build fails, like I've, because I've managed to do it, I managed to break the build. Um, and then, um, and basically, I, you know, I go and I'm like, crap, you know, the site's not going to be not be up. No, it's up. The site's up. It's just the build failed. That one never got pushed, right? Um, yep. So, you know, I, I think, I guess it depends on the types of errors that you're, that we're talking about, right? Like if you have some tests, test suites that are testing like front end JavaScript and things like that, maybe it'd be a different story, right? Yeah. And you can also, I mean, you can have it so that you're constantly building on every change to your, uh, to your um, development server. So you have all the, the previews, all the site previews, but you're not actually pushing up to prod until you specifically want to do it in production. Right. Um, and that's what we do like with a lot of my side sites where every single commit that goes through immediately gets built uh, from, uh, from the non-production branch, from the dev branch. Uh, so we can see as the process goes if everything's running smoothly and then push production. Absolutely, yeah. Brand, branch deploys are like, you know, amazing um, yeah. for testing that stuff. I, I know I've used it extensively even to like, even kind of um, soft test, like soft launch a site that I had redone that I wanted users to be able to try it and at least see it, but like, you know, um, but without pushing it live completely and things like that. It's just amazing yeah. how much you can do that way. And, like, especially like that's another thing as far as the DX, like you want to be able to empower people who have all the whole range of technical abilities. So if you're using a headless CMS and allowing content contributors to fill out a form, like they're used to of like, here's the content, here are the authors, here are the pictures. They don't know where that data goes, but you see that go up. 
And then once they add it, there's like maybe uh, Sarah Dresner has a really good uh, Contentful webhook article that you can see every time a Contentful addition is made, it triggers a deploy to Netlify and then you can pass that deploy preview to the content people and say, does this look like how you wanted it to look? Uh, and you're not touching any code in that whole process. Like it just, you're empowering as many people as possible to uh, make iterations to the site. And that's how you get your project to just keep iterating and keep bringing new stuff to your users. Okay, so I got one last question. We've got like three and a half minutes. So it's, you know, succinctly dun, as you dun, possibly dun, can dun, dun, dun. is, okay, so what, I know you're a, an Angular fan, obviously, but like, what would be your case? Like, how would you sell Angular specifically as it benefits the Jamstack? Like, what's the benefit of Angular in the Jamstack? Mostly just Angular's uh, core parts in general, where you're getting everything off the bat. So you never have to pick a router. You never have to figure out how you're doing state management. All of that comes through in Angular. So especially if you have big teams that you need to get on a page right away and just have everything you need in front of you, and including like every time you find a resource for Angular, it's going to be covering the same topics because nobody's varying in how they're doing a routing. Nobody's varying in how you're building out components. Like that's why you have that ng generate command because it is so opinionated that it's able to do more and more for you. And that's what's great about schematics, Angular schematics too, is that you can integrate uh, like we have one for Netlify. So it adds all of the functionality, signs you into Netlify. Uh, Angular Material has it. So when you just need to add those things, it's all right there at your fingertips. And so for collaboration for teams, it's all right there. And then, you know, add Jamstack and then it's perfect. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, that's, I'm, I've never messed too much with Angular, but the, I mean, I, I think it is kind of neat like that you know, the opinionated piece, it, being able to understand the stuff right away. I think, you know, having messed with React, everybody seems to do it their own way. So, <laughs> um, you know, yeah. It, it, yeah. It, so that's that's interesting. All right. So fabulous presentation, Tara. I uh, really Thank appreciate it. And best of luck with the baby. Um, can't wait to see pictures. So, uh, Me too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks, Tara. All right. Thanks so much, Matthew. Thank you, Brian. Lovely being here. Thanks, everyone.